Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video. Now, welcome back to Climb to Master the series. I got my main account and attempted to climb to Master. And now we return Diamond 351 LP as someone just subscribed. Thanks very much. Um, but yeah, we've jumped up a little bit since last episode. That would have been on stream. Remember, my Twitch stream is linked down below. I am streaming right now too. Um, if you ever want to kind of check what I'm doing uh, in the climb, then I'm probably streaming in between episodes. Uh, but yeah, I don't really know what I'm going to play. I'm mid lane though. You can already see in Thingy, they'd be like, can I jungle? He goes, I suck hard in AD. So that's that. So I don't really know what I'm going to play. Any, any overlap uh, bands? Yeah, two Zac bands. Is that it? I think so. Some people still think that that system is a little bit dumb. Uh, there's no other system that they could do that would be relatively quick. Anyone want a pick? Just asking because I don't love blind pick mid. If I'm blind pick, then I'm picking Orianna. Yeah. Orianna is my best pick just to like randomly pick something because I can play against anything. So, yeah. Obviously, there was an Orianna episode recently, but there's nothing I can do about that. Um... Let's go for a kill, shall we? Cool. Um, have I ever considered receiving coaching like Foxtrot got? Not really, no. Um, where, like, I, obviously I don't watch really other League YouTube videos, but I did watch the one where he received coaching, and I was like, okay, I'm going to see what Fox got out of it. I guarantee everything that Fox got out of that coaching he already knew. Um, cause like I, the G Bay recently has been under fire. Been, been to, people have been flaming G Bay to like, hey, you should get coaching. What people don't understand is we are league YouTubers. We're educational channels. So even though sometimes we can't pull off what we're talking about, we we should know it. Like I've been one game off master this season, so like I do know what I'm supposed to be doing. It's just kind of getting used to it and like making sure I'm consistent enough to pull it off. Um, so I'd say most League YouTubers really don't need it because in theory, it's our job. So, you know, we're obviously doing our job wrong if we we still need kind of coaching. Um, so, yeah. If ever, like, I don't know, would I ever get coaching e ever? Still probably not. Unless I go for like a role swap. It's like, okay, I'm suddenly be going to become an AD carry main. Then maybe I'd look to like find a challenger uh, in a challenger AD carry player and get them to give me tips. But I, I doubt I personally would ever go for like a proper coaching session. All right, so I think I'm against an Urgot. That's going to be a really rough matchup for me because he's a bit of a lane bully. Um, and Orianna's lane phase isn't going to be crazy strong versus somebody like an Urgot. Like it could be Kennen mid, Urgot top. That could happen, but. For some reason, I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, I, I just have a feeling it's going to be what I'm guessing. So I'm just going to go armor and MR just to kind of cover all bases. Whoa. Thanks very much for the donation. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Again, if I didn't say, I think I did. I'm streaming on Twitch right now. Um, so you will hear random stuff every now and then. Let's go for base Orianna skin, because why not? Anyway, let's go to the loading screen. Way to break down today's game. Okay, welcome to the loading screen. This is website, lolskill.net. And uh, yeah, things are a little bit weird. I think I'm against a Tristana mid, because in the actual roles, Urgot is the AD carry. So anyway, let's break it down. There's a D3 Lucian, D4 Nar, D4 Blitz, D4 Nunu with a very good win rate, and a D3 Orianna as myself. On enemy team, D4 Kennen, negative win rate. D2 Thresh, very good win rate. D3 Triss, negative uh, win rate. D5 Hecarim, negative win rate. And a D3 uh, Urgot. That he he could be mid. Again, he might be. But um, yeah, in any case, it's kind of weird to see Urgot. Because if we get to late game, we should kind of automatically win this game. So without much further ado, let's get to the game where we are playing Oriana mid. Okay, welcome to the game. Today we're playing Oriana in the mid lane. As you can see, Urgot has been put as the AD carry, but I'm guessing it's that. Like, I am guessing it's going to be that because one, he has barrier and two, he's got Storm Raiders, which is a bit more of a mid lane setup than the Tristana, who has obviously just got a basic heal with Warlords. So I I'd presume uh, that, yeah. It's annoying that whenever somebody picks a Blitzcrank, 
usually you want to go for an invade of some sort. And, uh, yeah, he wasn't here in the early game. So, yeah. Stack armor. Yeah, that's pretty much all we got to do. Are we going to go for it? No? No. Okay. Pretty much stack armor. It'll depending also what Kennen goes. Kennen might go an AD build, but he... Again, whenever, what was it, a few episodes ago when I went AD Cannon, uh, it would have been better in theory to go AP because my whole team was AD, but in the matchup that I was against a Trindamir, I wouldn't have survived as AP, so that's why I had to go AD. In this matchup, he can pretty much do anything. Oh. Now you got her heal. And Thresh had to take W level 1. That's really good. So Nunu, by the way, what, notice how Nunu notices this. What does Nunu do? He is heading over there instantly. Now, they do also see Kennen, so they might actually get a lot of damage on Kennen, and I am against an Urgot mid. So, again, pretty weird to see. Uh, Urgot, obviously, if you don't know, is getting a rework pretty soon. That is going to be transforming him, apparently, into, like, a proper tank. Uh, and he has, like, shotgun in his knees or something. Uh, but, yeah, he needs a rework. It's, it's that type of champion. that He's just too old. Man, like, that, that's the problem with him. Like, you can still do great on Urgot. People will throw examples at me. Maybe even in this game, Urgot will do fine. That's not the point. It's just on an average, you know, what Riot is looking at is how consistent the champion is. Um, how consistent he is and how much they're picked. They don't want a champion that's picked 0.01% of the time or whatever Urgot's pick rate is. They want a champion that's actually used. And that's why they always look to update champs. So he's looking to get that poison on me. Now, the one thing I will say when you're playing against champions that aren't really meta um, is uh, obviously you're not used to playing against that champion. So sometimes they can kind of surprise you because you're not used to how much damage an Urgot does. So that's something that you do have to look out for. Ah, he did hit me with the poison. Just run away. There's nothing he can do if you just run away from him. I don't have shield yet. I probably should have took shield at level... One, to be honest, against an Urgot, but whatever. Has he cannon? Hey, we did it. I didn't actually want to press W then, but... He kind of still went off. Alright, Nunu, he's doing a full clear and also did his own blue before the red. Okay, Hecarim didn't take it. So I'm guessing Hecarim doesn't know that his red was being stolen at level 1. Because uh, Kennen didn't actually have vision of it. Like, Kennen was standing off to the side. Like, Kennen was over here. That's not really protecting it. Damn. That was a... Uh, kind of an interesting gank. So he probably, I'm guessing, looked to do the blue. Um, because obviously his own red got stolen. And then just looked for a gank. Now I need to definitely ward behind me. Because now that I've burnt flash, I'm a very, very juicy target for Hecarim. Got it. Like taking that away from a jungler because it's it's early gold and also it's vision in the river for top lane. So it's like a win-win. Um so I just got I have to wait uh for this. Yeah, Ninja Tabby is the boot that I'm gonna be going today. Does Kennen have AP? So Kennen does have 21 AP, so he might be going AP Kennen. Uh there is a very good chance of him doing AP Kennen, but still Ninja Tabby against their team comp is 100 percent what we need. Um, because yeah, just trying to farm as much as we can right now. Well, obviously, remember, I do have teleport, so even though if I go low health, low mana in the early, I can still go back TP and not really get punished that much for it. Um, I do like teleport in that aspect. I'm letting him go back. You may be like, why are you letting him go back? He's doing dragon. So I don't want to let Urgot stay when there's a potential chance that he might kill Nunu. Nice bot lane. Now we get dragon, which is cloud. So more movement speed. I'm going to leave the lane in the middle of the lane and then I'm going to go back. So there's first blood from my bot lane. They're 20 CS up as well with First Blood. This game's going pretty good. 
I'm going to go for the early um, mana, though, because, again, this lane is all about sustain. Urgot will have tier. There you go. Uh, I don't need to teleport, but I think I'm going to. Uh, we don't actually know if he's going AD Kennen because every single Kennen starts with Doran's Blade. He could just start with Doran's Blade and then um, transition into AP. So, yeah. We do not know. Uh, level 6 should be pretty uh, easy ganks if Nunu wanted to come mid. When uh, Urgot has burnt his um, flash, obviously he's very, very immobile. I don't know how the... Oh. Okay. Hecarim likes mid. <laughs> so that's the the, the only... The, Hecarim's on two ganks this whole game, and both of them have been mid lane. So that was the ultimate from Urgot, which I believe also fears... Oh no, it only fears stuff around me, I think. But yeah, that's the second gank for he Hecarim in this game, and it on mid lane, so... Apparently they do like ganking me. But that's okay, whatever. It's all about scaling into late game and an Urgot versus an Orianna. You know how that's going to go. So Urgot is stealing the red once again. I, that's very risky because once uh, someone has stolen one buff, the likelihood of someone doing it again is very high. So Nunu might have just killed himself for doing this. Okay, he's fine. Urgot doesn't have flash or anything. Or ult. Oh no, he does have flash, but he doesn't have ult, so he couldn't kill the Nunu. It's a good steal, but again, sometimes you've got to ask yourself, is it even worth it? Is it worth burning the flash for that? I don't know. It is if... Uh... Oh. Damn, what the hell's the range of that? Like, that's the thing. I've never played against an Urgot in the past few months, so I have no idea what the range of that actually is. <laughs> he did. He got it. Hey, we got both. Lovely. Really good play by Nunu, to be honest. Like, there's one of two things that that Nunu's doing well. He has the confidence to go in. But more importantly, he has the confidence in us. That he's confident that the team will come for him. Notice how you can definitely tell that by constantly he's saying, well played team. So he's a Nunu that is looking for his team to help him. And that's, by the way, why Nunu is a good champion, but not very good for lower ranks. When people are like, oh, Huz, you're wrong about Nunu being not a great jungler for, like, the best jungler. No, I'm right, because Nunu is such a team-orientated jungler. So playing it in bronze or silver is never a good idea, because the team play in those ratings is just bad. It's usually bad, and this is, like, diamond mid-diamond. It's usually bad in this rating, I'm going to be honest, but it's just a little bit better than normal. And even it's surprising me how good it is. Ugh, go away. Nice. I had the flash, but whatever. Bot lane both died? Yeah, bo both bot lane died. That was kind of poop. I don't know how. I think they got ganked? I'm not sure, though. I'm buying my Ninja Tabby, uh, which is not giving me a very strong lane phase. But um, it's all about survival for me right now. Like, I'm ahead on last hits. I've got three assists. It's a shame that I don't have one kill, but, you know, I'll take it. Nar should be looking to jump on his face. Like, right now, go, go, go. Nar's not reacting, unfortunately, so he doesn't get the double bounce. But i got to be careful of the stun. And I'll... Oh, he flashed into it! Kenan flashed into the Nar-Q. <laughs> By the way, I just noticed neither of them, that Kenan hadn't backed yet. So I was like, how did that nar -Q finish that Kenan off? It's because Kenan only had a Doran's Blade. And that's why, folks, it's so important to use your gold in the early game. I was never expecting that Kenan to get killed by that Q, but he did because how squishy he was because he only had a Doran's Blade at 10 minutes in the game. That's why. It's really important to use your gold. Alright, there's a top TP and top lane. I'm helping with this, like, right now because it's, like, it spawns at 10 minutes and we're doing it at 10 minutes. So the earlier you do it, the more it actually means. Oh, 
There's a kill for me. I, I, I didn't need to use ultimate. Bot lane get a kill. Hecarim is bot lane though. Unfortunately, I don't have teleport. It's up in 10 seconds. Uh, if I had TP, I would have gone down. But we get Rift Herald. Yeah, this game's going good. Do I think Rift is a little OP? I, I still hate Rift Herald. It doesn't belong in League of Legends. The whole premise of it doesn't make sense in League. It makes sense in Heroes of the Storm because the game from the ground up was built all around, you know, helping people. And doing big team play stuff. Damn. I thought I'd do more damage than that. Ah, I don't know how uh, Blitzcrank actually died. It must have just been a big mistake by him overstaying. Lucian should have gone mid. God damn it, Lucian. So I went uh, bot lane to try and get that kill. Um, so Lucian should have gone mid to hold the tower. Uh, sorry, yeah, I didn't finish my point. People are trying to be snarky in chat. Uh, Rift Herald doesn't belong in League. Baron is a stationary component that is only done when your team is actually looking to group. Rift Herald is an element of the game that is in lane phase, which has been a big thing in League of Legends since the beginning of the game. Um... Oh god, he's very low. Um, that forces you to play in a way that you normally don't play in teamfight stage, which, in my opinion, doesn't really belong. No. Nunu shouldn't have run back. Um, but yeah, to me, it just doesn't make sense. Oh, this massive monster thing that just crushes your lane, uh, crushes your tower in lane phase? That just, to me, doesn't really belong in League of Legends. I'm going to go bot lane and look for a gank. Can you... Do we know if this is warded? I'll just throw a ward there myself. Let's go. Hook. Oh, that was, like, buggy as hell. Huh. Alright, I'm coming back to help Nunu. Aha! Where's our AD carry? Hello? Oh, I love AD carries that just kind of stay FK farming when there's a play going on. It's like, how, how does that make sense? Why are you not DPSing? Oh my god, this Lucian! Oh, he's so passive. Holy moly, that Nunu played that really well. It's just the Lucian was holding back. As soon as Nunu starts ulting, bang, get in there. You're distracting them like crazy. But you can see that Lucian was still kind of hesitant. It's like, ugh. Don't be hesitant when, like, that Nunu is setting you up. This game's going good, though. 2 4 Urgot. I'm expecting this Urgot. I'm not gonna. What the hell was that? I'm expecting this Urgot at the end of the game to have about, like, 20 deaths. Like, I don't see how he's gonna have a good uh, um, lane phase. I'm going to go do blue. That was the weirdest Rift Herald use I've ever seen. Like, what? He used it in our own jungle. Alright. I want to gank for top lane. Oh, I have no idea. Staying mid. No. Though the reason why I wanted to gank top lane then because the bot lane play was happening. The worst thing that I wanted or the thing I really didn't want was a cannon TP on top of them. So I was like, alright, let's just kill Kennen. But I got stayed mid, which I was expecting him to go bot lane. Uh got 
I know they don't have to be that scared of him, but, you know, still worth warning them about him. There he is. Yeah, he won't do anything. Cool. This game is kind of like a stomp in a way. Will I play Twisted Fate? Uh, probably not. Uh, Twisted Fate is kind of hard for me to play in a couple reasons. The biggest reason is I'm actually partially colorblind. So doing the cards, it's sometimes it takes me a bit longer sometimes to go, is that is that gold card? Because uh, sometimes it just looks a little bit similar to another color. So he's not great for me in that aspect. Because League, unfortunately, don't actually have a good colorblind mode. Like for the, pop the, the amount of popularity that this game has, it does surprise me that they have a bad colorblind mode. Oh no! He survived with like two health! Oh man! Are you kidding? <laughs> he survived with like two health. Oh, that sucks. Uh, but yeah, the other reason about Twisted Fate is that he's like a champ that you should probably play a lot of before considering like looking to take him up in ranked. And, like, I need to be very careful with picking up new champions. Because, like, I'm not in just a basic rating. We are approaching, like, higher, you know, higher rating here. So I can't just willy-nilly just go, I'm going to play this. Because it could go really bad. Because half the time that you're playing in this rating, you're against people who are maining stuff, who have played it for years. So if you just randomly go, I'm going to play Twisted Fate that I haven't played in two years. The chances of you getting wrecked is extremely high. Um, mountains up. I presume Urgot's gonna do that. I need to go back because I've got 2700 gold. So this game's going really well. And this, by the way, is why I pick Orianna when I have the blind pick. Is because I'm comfortable and confident enough on this champion to basically play versus anything. Like, I don't think there's any matchup in League of Legends that I'm like, ooh, I need to be worried about that. I, I really don't think they exist. You know, I'm playing against an Urgot. I don't care. If I was playing against a Zed, I don't care. LeBlanc, I don't care. You can adjust your play on Orianna more than probably most mid laners. Like, if I need to max shield to survive against an assassin, I can do that. If I need to go damage like this episode and kill her, God, I can do that. It just depends what you need. And I'd say Orianna is one of the best champions for that to do. But like, so I'll obviously, why is Orianna not picked in every single match of League of Legends ever then? The reason for it is because she's not the best at anything. She's not the best laner. She's not the best team fighter. She's not the best. So when you're looking in competitive, people in competitive want to pick the best at a certain thing because they build a team comp around that one certain thing. So I'm just covering top lane because there were two people top lane randomly. Uh, this Blitzcrank, by the way, is hitting his hooks like nuts. It's really good to see. Part of me thinks Tristana is still here. Apparently not, though. Oh. Damn, I nearly one-shot both of them. So if you have no idea what happened, Tristana looped around the whole way, jumped over this way, and altered me into cannon. I nearly one-shot her if I had a bit more damage than I would have. Like, if, for example, if I had Sork Boots, not... Uh, if I had Sork Boots, not Ninja Tabby, Tristana was dead. But obviously I have, uh... I've built to win the game. I haven't built just to kind of do damage. Because considering their team comp and a cannon that's not doing very good... Ninja Tabby is just easily the best choice uh, today. It, it was still a good thing, by the way, me going top lane because I still keep them away from what's actually happening. You can see Kennen doesn't care, Tristana doesn't care, and we're ending the game. So, a little bit of a weird one, but I'll take it. So, I guess what you can get from this episode is how to adjust your play, even if you're against like a weird off meta pick. You can see he did really bad. So you just adjust your play and you'll probably be fine. Yeah, they are just absolutely wrecking them. Maybe I can get a kill on Cannon if he's not careful. Hey, we got him. Hey, just before the game ended. 
So there we go. That is the next episode of Climb to Master. Uh, that will make us nearly in promo to Diamond 2, I think. So let's go in the outro and see how much damage it did and all that good stuff. And have a little looky-looky. So, we did... Game is still in progress, apparently. There we go. Uh, so we went 635, 130 CS. We got an A overall. We got uh, 18 LP, so we're now on 69, ladies. And then damage done. Uh, we do the second most in the game with Lucian doing the most. So there we go, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did and you're happy that we're climbing at relative ease. Like I said, I think Diamond 2 is where stuff is going to get a little bit trickier. Right now, it's not that difficult. But if you do are enjoying, throw a like on the video. Remember, we've got the $1,000 right point uh, giveaway happening. Link back down below. And that's going to be it. Like, subscribe. See you guys next time.